Hey guys, welcome back. Scott with Killer Minis Painting and Gaming. We're going to continue with this Orc Marauder in our Reaper Learn to Paint series. So you can see we're trimming the flash off of this model. Something that we didn't do in the last video. For the most part, you want to just make sure you have a really sharp knife when you're dealing with this material that contains a lot of vinyl. Vinyl is very flexible and it doesn't scrape very well. So you're really going to have to cut through the very fine flash that's left over in this model. Make sure you rub it all off too when you're done. Otherwise, it's going to get in your way when you're painting. So let's stick this bad boy down. Some poster tack. Get it all nice and firm. I'm going to use a different brush than came with this kit because I've done. So here's the leather brown and the naga green. We're going to mix those equally in a one to one ratio. So one drop of the brown, one drop of the green. We might need to double that because there's a decent amount of skin here. And actually, with my initial mix, it was a little bit on the brown side. So I realized I need green, more green. You can see I'm using the needle nose there because those paint nozzles are a real pain in the butt. Something about the Reaper nozzles. Uh, eventually, I got the color nice and dark green is what we're looking for. So we're in the first step of the model painting, right? We have the base coat. We have shades. And then we have highlights. So we're going to enter the base coat phase by going ahead and painting on some green skin that we just mixed up with that dark green paint. If you watch, I'm really not doing long strokes with the model. I'm kind of stabbing and moving it around. And part of that is a byproduct of not having a primer coat. The paint doesn't really glide because that model just kind of sucks that paint in and it gets almost kind of sticky. But you're going to have to kind of mash it in, move it around a little bit, put some more paint in the brush, and it goes on fairly thick. But remember, it will dry and shrink and it'll look good. Just as long as you dilute it properly in the beginning. But work our way around the model, make sure you get all the little spots that are skin. And actually, there was a lot of white showing through as we start to see the spots that have already dried. So because of that, we're going to have a, uh, yep, we're going to have to apply a second coat here. So, not to fear, sometimes this happens. Just remember that, you know, painting, it's a nice, relaxing exercise, if you will. So don't get stressed out. You're not doing this to be stressed and to get all worked up. Just relax, be creative. Just kind of get in the zone. Slap some paint down on that bad boy. Take your time, have some patience. We're so rushed nowadays with all the things that we do. Rush to work, rush to get the job done, rush to get to the bank, rush to get to the store. This is your one time to sit and just you and the model, man. Paint it out. So we're about ready to finish up with this. Just applying some final touches. And I did notice that some of the paint was uh, a little thick around the face and I was blocking the details. All right, so we're done with the skin. We're going to use this desert and sand and mountain stone. We're going to apply those one to one. And this is going to be for the fur. The color you're going to get is going to be kind of a gray, which is going to be the base coat for that fur. Now we'll highlight it with some more furry type colors later. 
right now we're just gonna lay it on down and this actually covers quite well probably because of the gray nice dark color it's a little more opaque than a color that has some green in it so pay, pay special attention to where the chain mail ends and the fur begins all right so we're already done with that fur now we're shaking up some of the black and we are going to start hitting all the spots that are chain mail armor now of course make sure you add some water to it this black i found my pot was a little thinner than the other one so I used a little less water you may find that's the case with yours too checking it on my nail to see its consistency there we go so yeah this is going to be the base coat and later on we're going to hit this with a with a metal colored paint also known as metallic mainly because it has flecks of metallic in it but this here is a really good example for painting chainmail. You start off with a black base coat, then we'll continue later with a dry brush of a very metallic paint. And naturally, all that black's gonna be in the recesses, and then the shiny paint will be on top. You'll see it's pretty cool. You're using black, so you do have to kind of be careful. You don't wanna get it all over the skin, and all right we're already on the harvest brown that's going to be the next base coat that we're going to apply and all the bits that are basically his leather armor so we'll start down here on his right foot just basically cover everything that's white hit the knees you're gonna to need to buckle in for this color because there's a lot of brown Start on the other foot. And this color actually covered pretty good. And it pretty much already looks like leather. Wait till you see what we did with it later and really give it that weathered look. Again, go on in here and try to be somewhat careful. But you know, make a mistake here or there, don't sweat it. Use one of your empty brushes and just wick it up. And you can always go back later and do a little bit of touching up here and there. Fix maybe some mistakes where you might have got careless with the brush. So now do notice that you can see the straps work its way around his shoulders and under the arms. If you were to miss that, it would really kind of make it look a little odd, but you want to kind of pay attention to the uh, original picture in the instruction book or use uh, my my model here as an example I'm not even sure what these things are called but they're basically like oh actually I think they're called bracers for his arm we're gonna paint those things up now you can see there's lots of leather to lay down this harvest brown and I'm almost forgot the straps here on that arm that holds the weapon so yeah even the shield here we we believe it's kind of like this hardened leather strapped around maybe some wood you're going to notice that on this large surface you kind of see the weakness of not having a prime coat it gets a little blotchy but that's okay it kind of works because it kind of looks a little orky, a little thrown together, dirty. Next color, we're on the blade steel. This is that metallic color I told you about. We're just going to go ahead and start off hitting the weapon. You'll notice you can see a lot of white through it. And we're pretty much going to have to do a second coat with that. Again, the large surface area of that sword gets a little streaky. And I was just showing you that I'm kind of brush that I'm using. I'm using a smaller brush. Now we're going to come in and hit 
little spiky bits of his leather armor. Now, even after we go through all this and apply paint to these little spiky bits, later on in the second or the third step and we dry brush, we end up actually kind of getting brown paint all over it. So you may want to skip this part of the metallic because you'll see later in the video, I'll have to go back over and do this again. And, you know, not a big deal. It took me an extra 10 or 15 minutes. But it was really because I followed the directions verbatim. So if I had a chance to do it again, I would omit doing the spiky bits until the very end when I'm all done working on the leather. So yeah, don't forget that on the shield, you've got some spiky bits too. You can imagine that this is what the orc would be bashing his enemy with. Even in defense, he could cause some pain. Isn't that relaxing? <laughs> nice. All right, so also on the shoulders here, we have some more spiky bits. I want to be careful that you don't get this all over the brown. Keep this paint concentrated to the actual spike. Because then you're going to have to clean that up later. And here on his stomach armor, I guess it's like a chest plate. Quite a few little spiky bits. Now I am actually going to have to go in and clean up. Oh, no, I take that back. We went ahead and grabbed some Naga green and we're going to base coat the base. Just like we did with a skeleton. I guess these guys are all fighting and standing on a very fresh spring prairie. Because <laughs> it's like the greenest grass you've ever seen. But we'll dirty it up later. Get it look a little bit more realistic and less fantastical. So here we go. I'm giving you a spin. And this is all the base coats down. Now we head into our washes. Which is our shade component. We're going to grab that Naga green. So here's some of that black. We're going to mix that with the green one to one ratio. Then we're going to give it like four or five drops of water. I'm just going to create our wash and we're going to hit the skin with this. And you're going to start to see this have a really nice effect on that skin. I'm going to get all into the shadows of that musculature. It's gonna make some of the details of the face here pop out. And like with a lot of washers, you wanna make sure that it doesn't pool up in the puddles on the raised areas of the detail. If it puddles into the recesses, it's not a big deal. Actually, with an orc, we kinda of want that effect. But pretty much, Use this mixture on all of the skin areas that we previously worked so hard putting that base coat down. Really washes are your best friend. So I actually went ahead and took some of this because it has some green and I put it into that blade just to kind of tie in the green from the rest of the model. And add some to the blade. Give it a little bit of a dirty look. And that's pretty much it. So now, now we grab just the black by itself. And add a bunch of water. I believe that was black. Yes. Yeah, definitely it's... It was the black and four or five drops of water. If we're going to hit the fur... Pretty much everything else in the model is going to get this black. It's going to kind of give it an oily look. So I'll hit the chain mail. And later on we'll be hitting the armor. We're even going to slap this onto the, the green grass. Mainly because that, that green, like I said, it was just so bright. But 
as the instructions state on all other areas other than the skin. Now you're going to really see that this wash is going to make this shield look a lot more beat up and war torn. Like I said, washes are your friend. They really add some variation and interest to the model as you as you work your different layers of paint. Plus it gets uh, some good colors into some really tight spots that you wouldn't want to do by, by hand. So working our way around the model, like I said, this black wash gets everywhere except for the skin. And I'm actually going back and hitting spots. Just kind of taking a feel for it. It makes the weapon look real good too. You can see I kind of wiped it off on the edge, top edge, but I left it on the bottom portion to kind of give it a natural shadow. And then I went ahead and I actually added this into the sockets of the face and in the mouth area. Kind of get a little separation of those details. So here's a spin of those final washes. And I'm looking it's looking pretty good. So now we're going to head into the dry brushing phase. So I'm showing you some of the different brushes that I'm using in this dry brushing phase. I have a Filbert, a Citadel short dry brush, and uh, I forget what the other one was, a Lowell Corner. And we're going to grab that blade steel, put that in our palette. Sorry I didn't stick with the original brushes that came with it, but after doing one model, it was time to level up and get some better quality brushes. But if you're still using those, have no fear. You'll, you'll level up once you get tired of fighting with those things. It's the one knock on this kit. They could have given you maybe some better quality brushes. So now we're dry brushing that chain mail with that blade steel. Pretty much everywhere that there's chain mail, you want to get this dry brushed. Just rubbing it trying to be perpendicular to the details don't push it into the model because then you're going to get it in the recesses you just want to lightly rub it on the surface of that texture so again i want to be careful not to hit the fur here but uh, there is some chain mail in this area which is why i kind of switched to a smaller brush than what was given to us here we go. We've got the smaller brush out. I don't want to get that fur covered in the blade steel. Especially up here in the chest area where there's this little strip of chainmail like, I don't know, I guess it's protecting his nipple. <laughs> you don't want to, you don't want no nipple injuries when you're fighting in the fantasy realm. So we're going to grab this light brown. And this is what we're going to dry brush in all of the leather areas. So, you really kind of want to just focus on the extreme edges. That's how I started. Then I realized, no, I kind of want it all over. Because it was just so dark that it needed a little bit more color. So, I'm going through, and this is just kind of a at your own taste you know they say a little bit goes a long way but with this one I actually used quite a bit um, it was a pretty heavy dry brush plus this color kind of brings back the original base color that we knocked down with that black wash so excuse me the earlier one was harvest brown um, which was the, the original base coat color. So we were bringing it up from the black that we knocked it down dark. So now we're using the light brown as kind of the extreme highlight. And I believe, um, let me double check that, but I think we, that we mixed it. Yeah, it was mixed in with a harvest brown, one, one to one drop ratio. That's important because if you go straight light brown, 
it's going to be way too bright. So make sure it's a 50-50 it's a mix of that original harvest brown with a light brown. And you can see I'm kind of just focusing on the outer edges. The areas where I know that the light's going to hit the most, I might go a little heavier like I'm doing right there. But in the bottom of that shield, I left it alone. So and of course, there's going to be a lot of light coming in the top of the model. So we're going to hit it a bit heavier with this lighter mixture. That's that little neck leather piece he's got going on. And I believe that'll do it for the leather. So now we're doing a mixture of the light brown, the yellow, and the green. And that's what's going to give us our highlight color for the orc skin. So you want to go in here very carefully and apply this to the upper areas of the skin. You don't want to be pushing this in and getting rid of what you worked so hard with the wash. You want to still maintain some of that base coat. You just want to show some highlighted areas. So as they say, less is more. I went a little heavy on it. It's just a personal taste. It's a artistic choice. And yeah, I put a lot on the face because there's a lot of light coming there. So luckily there wasn't a whole lot of skin to really mess with that. And that's the finished look of the skin. But now we're going to grab some of that desert sand. And then uh, I think we use that straight. Just apply some water to it. And we're going to highlight up the fur. And you're going to see that right away that this is going to make this look a bit more like fur. I want to make sure we don't get this on the chain mail, obviously. And I actually went, I went pretty heavy with it. Because I was liking the difference in color tone between this and the chain mail. Had I done it again a second time, I probably would have been a little lighter with it because it does draw a little bit of your focal attention to the bottom part of the model, which I don't particularly like to do, but it still looks cool. It looks like fur. Fur looks like fur. The chain mail looks like chain mail. Like I said, it's your mini. Enjoy it. Don't stress over it. Just kind of paint and figure out what you're happy with. So... Now we're going in with the with the next metal that's the silver. It's the brighter of the two metals. And we're just doing a, a more extreme highlight of that original chain mail. And I am using that smaller dry brush, so this is a little easier. You may have to take a, your time and really be patient if you're using the stock brush that it came with. But then we're going to hit the upper parts of the blade here to make that really shiny. You can see I'm trying to keep that black shadow intact on the blade that we originally established. So now this is the part where, you know, instructions tell you to go in and then dry brush the, the spikes, which is probably going to result in getting it all over the brown. Remember I told you. Yeah, it's going to make a mess. And this is what I'm realizing while I'm working on this. So at some point here, I actually have to go back in and just use the original metal color. That, uh, what was it called? Silver blade. And then go back in as later after doing the original step we've already done. And then hitting it with, with a shinier silver. You can see I'm... Struggling with that paint pot again, having to take that nozzle off. I gave up on it for now. I'm going to do the base. And this base is a mixture. Yeah, the base is a mixture of the Naga green 
and the candlelight yellow and a one drop to one drop ratio. Remember with dry brushing, you're not adding the water. Um, and if you are, it's going to make your dry brushing really hard. And there and put an O in there and put an annotation. I'm assuming you've watched my first video. So I probably didn't bring it up. But here's the finished result. I'm kind of pointing things out and looking at how happy I am with the work I've done. And we are going to head into the next phase. I believe it's hard to tell when I'm narrating. Yeah, I'm, I, this is the part where I have to go back in and start with the pen code again on the spikes. Because it really was a bit of a mess. We dry brushed with all that brown. It got all over it. So you should have wait till this part to kind of base coat the spikes. And then we'll follow that immediately up with a shinier metallic highlight. Needless to say, I was, I was none too happy that they kind of laid the instructions out this way. But, you know, even if they had put it in parentheses, I probably wouldn't have read it. Like, uh, as an option, you might want to save this till later. I think they were really focused on keeping things in a specific step order. Base coat, wash, dry brush. If you're new to painting, you can kind of see the theme that I'm hammering home here. That really is the foundation to all your miniature painting. No matter what te technique you're doing, it's going to be, am I doing a base coat? Am I doing some sort of a shade? Or am I doing a highlight? In our example, our wash is going to be our shade. Our dry brush is our highlight. Now later on with future videos, I'll show you some other techniques that you can get either a shade or a highlight in different ways and they all have their applications and their pros and cons but they're a little advanced for what we're doing now and kind of out of scope of the project uh, out of scope to the goal of this video so there we go I'm still working on these spikes <laughs> so hopefully you didn't do the same thing I did but if you did hey feel good about it. So here I've also noticed that I've gotten sloppy with some of that uh, metallic. I have to go back and I knocked it down with a little bit of that black wash that was still on the palette. And it's probably all you're going to have to do unless you really made a big mistake. You can always put a little bit of that brown back on your palette and then hit it with wash and get it all to blend back in just up to you how much time you want to put into fixing a little tiny mistake that might not even be seen especially once it's on the gaming table so here's another brush we're gonna do a video on on brush selection and this one it's got a nice sharp point and it's gonna allow me just to put these tiny little specks on the top of these spikes I'll stop making mistakes and having to go back and hit it with a wash. <laughs> so, if you apply this really, really bright metal, then to the entire spike, then it's just going to be way too much. But hey, that's what you want to do. You can do it. So we're going to put this super bright metallic on the edge, kind of give it a nice sharp edge highlight. And somewhere along the line, I just decided to start putting some little lines in there and make some marks that look like it's been, like the blade is war-torn. That looked pretty cool. Again, remember, you don't have to follow this verbatim. Use your inner artistic voice. If something calls out to you, just do it most cases you can take it back if you don't like it either way it's part of the learning process so here I showed you some white and I believe we're gonna go ahead and hit yeah the tops of the fur here 
Really, this is just an extreme highlight. We're working on our finishing details to complete this model. So just like before with a dry brush, prepare your brush the same way, nice and dry, no water. And here I'm just picking a few very high spots to draw some extra attention to focally. Don't overdo it, but just do it till it feels good to you. <laughs> okay, so moving right along, I'm going to grab some of that brown wash that's not in your kit, Army Painter, and I'm going to cover some wash videos later, just because it was convenient. You could still do it with the black and the water, and I'm going to hit this leather again. For whatever reason, I felt like it was a little too base coat brown looking and it needed a, a darker dirtier orky feel to it like we had in the very beginning so i'm going back over this because remember when we dry brush we kind of brought up the the color and i'm hitting the the axe as well trying to tone down those super bright scratches i put in and some of the spikes were a little too shiny for my liking so went ahead and put a little there too. Remember, just do it till it feels good for you visually. Okay, so next we should be looking at giving an extreme highlight to the grass. And basically we're just gonna take the yellow with a touch of the green that was still on the palette. And just in the very edges of this, where the light would be the brightest, we're going to give a little bit of an extreme highlight. Don't put this under the model. I mean, I guess you could if you wanted, but um, we don't want it to overpower the piece, which is the base that we're working on. All right, so next... We want to try to bring a little detail out with the teeth. So I'm checking the consistency of the white. I didn't like it. Remember I had some white on my palette earlier and it was still there. So I eventually had to just add some fresh. It's very important when you're trying to paint a very small area, excuse me, like an eyeball or teeth. Um, you want your paint to be pretty thick. Not straight out of the bottle in most cases with a tiny bit of water. So you want it to maintain its shape, but still be able to spread. That's what we're doing here. We're gonna apply this in the teeth area. And you're gonna see that it's, it's way too bright. So that's okay. We're treating this like a base coat to the teeth. And we're gonna come back and we're gonna knock it down with some successive washes of brown at first and then I'm gonna grab some black and put that in there and this is kind of a by taste kind of thing like like anything else when it comes to your final details again do it till your inner artistic voice says ah that's what I want okay so I'm thinking I'm, I'm digging that. Nope, I wasn't. <laughs> so there's the black. And we're going to go back and hit that. Now, I've got a few moments here. So there are times during my video you may hear a little, little creaking, a little groaning. I have a, a medical condition that causes this particular noise. It's kind of like a just air escaping as I talk. Like a little frog. I call it my, my buddy the frog. So if you're thinking of some sort of an audio anomaly, it's not. It's just my condition. I apologize. I try to edit it out when I can. But I do miss it sometimes. So now we're hitting the eyes. And we went in there and uh, re-solidified the black. Then we're going to take a drop of the desert sand because white would might be a little too stark but we're gonna hit that desert sand and i might have mixed in a little bit of white with it off the palette it's hard to tell here on this re replay back but it's up to you you can use white if you want but it'll be very bright 
So again, checking my consistency. And using a very fine brush, we're going to basically just dot the little area, and you can actually see it on the sculpt. It's actually the eyeball. You definitely will see it as long as you didn't uh, put way too much base coat on. So now that it's white, I notice it looked a bit fish-eyed. So we're going to drop a little bit of black wash in there to kind of clean that up. And magically, it just kind of worked. So when any time you deal with eyes, if something works, man, the rule of thumbs, leave it alone. So I'm looking at it again, and it looks decent, but it just needs a little something extra. I think we go back in for just the tiniest dot of the white or no? No, I think we were good. It was good the way it was. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's right. We only did the white once. So here I'm just giving you a little spin, showing you the final product, trying to get the right lighting for you to really see all the hard work we did. And hey, this is not difficult to do. You can see it just takes a little patience and time sit back, enjoy, take your time and keep your expectations in check, you know, especially if it's your first or second model in the case of the Reaper Learn to Paint kit. That's the first kit you've ever grabbed. This is a good time to talk about that subscribe button. Make sure you hit it so you can find out the next video or you'll get notified. Hit the little bell. Here I'm showing you the model. This is the, the third model in the kit, the third and final model, which is a paladin that we're going to paint up. I'm looking forward to that. So I will see you on that video. And uh, here's just a little shot of something I've, I've been working on. This is another Reaper model. It's actually uh, a metal figure. It's a little bit more detailed than these PVCs. And... Uh, that one's part of the Reaper Bones. Another work in progress I'm, I'm working with. So, yes, make sure you're subscribed and like the video to let, give me a little bit of feedback. Let me know you're digging it. And hey, if you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the comments. So, hey guys, thanks for joining me. We will see you next time in the next video. Double pieces on the way out. Peace.